Shalom Okoti, my sister. Welcome to another video. Once again, we're coming back with another womanhood video, another video on femininity, and more specifically, the feminine manner, meaning your mannerisms, how you walk, how you talk, how you move your hands, how I move my hands. This is a huge area that I know I definitely need to work on myself, so I'm really, really excited to talk about it with you today. Um, but as always, before we start, I do want to make sure I point out that we do have a Facebook group going on um, for Dear Koti. And I want to just share one of the biggest reasons why I did start the group beyond being able to have, you know, an awesome family of women who get together online and are able to support each other in our walk. Uh, the other reason is just because you never know what's going to happen. So I think last week, actually, YouTube actually went down for um, almost a 24 hour period um, in most of the United States. And so it was just really a reminder to me that you really don't have control over these social media sites like Facebook and YouTube and etc. Which is another reason why I also started the Dear Koti website. Um, but you know, it's always good to have multiple areas where we can gather together. So um, Facebook is one of those areas that I definitely put a lot of effort into um, trying to cultivate and build for that reason. So that if YouTube was to go down, um, I would definitely still be able to communicate with you guys via Facebook. Um, but that is also why, again, I am building the website and I need to update it and add some more blog posts and things to it. But, you know, it takes time and I have to be patient with myself, especially with me putting out so many videos a week. It takes a lot of time for me being able to write. So um, I did just want to go ahead and shout out that Facebook group. It's really awesome just to see it continue to flourish and grow. So I definitely suggest that you sign up for that. Well not sign up but click the link down below and request to join the group and I'll go ahead and add you and yeah so with that um, I want to go ahead and jump in but always before I do just so that for anybody's new um, who knows who I'm speaking about if I refer to um, ya or Yahua, that is ya well ya see it's so it's such a habit of mine I'm referring to our God our Father our Elohim our Creator so ya is just the shortened form form of Yahua. And then, um, and again, that is his name that we are given in the word. Um, and then his son's name, you know, our Messiah is Yahusha, and that's how I personally pronounce it. Um, so if you do pronounce it differently, that's perfectly fine. But I just want you to know who I'm speaking of whenever I do mention them. I most likely won't be really much in this video. I will be mentioning Yah, of course, because hello, Yah. But um, we may not talk about the Messiah very much in this video, just because it's just really... It's really almost kind of common sense things when it comes to being a woman and how we, you know, I'm working on the whole hand stuff, you know, trying to be more feminine and less masculine. So, as always, for those of you who may be new, I always have notes, so don't think it's being me being rude looking down or anything and that I, you know, I love to look into your eyes <laughs> or into my camera, but I love to be able to make eye contact with you, but um just so I can stay on topic, I like to have my notes in front of me so that I don't ramble. All right, so the feminine manner is the motions of a woman's body. It's the way we walk, it's the way we talk, the way we use our hands, the sound of our voice, our facial expressions, our laugh, and the list goes on. So this feminine manner is attractive to a man because it's a big contrast from his masculine strength and firmness. As we said yesterday, the feminine appearance also needs the feminine manner added to it. So you gotta have both of them. You know, you have to really kind of look at every area of your life, your character, your outer appearance, your inner, you know, appearance, and really see how you can make each area feminine. So it's really awkward when you think about it. And I talked about this yesterday when you have one, a woman who dresses femininely but acts very masculine, masculinely, it's very awkward to see. Um, and so that's why we have to make sure we make it a point to make sure that we are feminine in all of our ways. And again, being feminine is really just distinguishing yourself from being a man. That's all it's about. It's not about um, you know, being frilly and things like that because a lot of women as soon as they hear being feminine they immediately get turned off 
and immediately assume that it means that you have to be something you're not. And that's not what it means. It really truly means accentuating the differences between masculine and feminine. And again, we all know that masculine and feminine are simply energies and that everything has a masculine and a feminine side. Um, but being a female and a woman, you do want to um, accentuate your feminine side a lot more so that you stand out when compared to a man and so that also will attract a man as well so when it comes to a feminine manner there were a couple examples that immediately in the bible that i thought of i don't have bible scripture on this just because i'm gonna really kind of cover these examples really quickly mainly because there's a lot of stuff that goes along with feminine manner that i really want to touch on um, so the first example was really queen esther and so when you think about it um, in the book of esther you know you have you know Esther who goes through this process with all these other women of 12 months of basically getting prepared outwardly so their outward appearance as far as their skin and their clothes and their hair so they you know were getting rigorous baths and getting you know tons of different oils massaged into their skin and hair and all of this stuff to make them appear more feminine on the outside but her mannerisms is also really what got the king's attention because you have to think there were tons of women who were going through this process to meet the king and potentially become the next queen and when you read about the way that Esther acted I mean beyond her just being feminine inwardly her mannerisms um, were more feminine and you can just tell just by the way that she spoke to him the way she acted around him she was very refined around him you know there were women who were very easily and willing to sleep with him to sleep their way into the queen you know queenship and Esther was the complete opposite she stood out from the rest of the women um, another example that I immediately thought of was Rachel with Jacob and so um, when Jacob was actually going to, well, the when the way he met Rachel um, was just the way, like, they immediately, their eyes immediately kind of clicked, and it was almost like he was just immediately in love. <laughs> um, and it was her mannerisms, her feminist way of moving that, and, and, you know, her character as well, but because we're talking about mannerisms today, um, it was her feminine manner and her feminine way of being and of moving and of doing things that really kind of attracted him. And he worked 14 years in order to marry her. The first, he was only supposed to work seven years, but the father tricked him and had him marry his other daughter instead. And so he worked another seven just to be able to um, marry Rachel. So what her being a feminine woman and her knowing how to function as a woman definitely stood out to him and caused him to work extra hard twice as long than he planned just so he could have her hand in marriage so those are really two really awesome examples that i just immediately think of off the top of my head when it comes to just being feminine in general and uh, when you are a feminine person you naturally will have a feminine manner so we acquire the feminine manner again by accentuating the differences between ourselves and men just like with our feminine appearance which we talked about yesterday so because the masculine manner is so strong firm and heavy ours should be more gentle delicate and light we can apply this to the way we walk talk use our hands carry ourselves and our overall behavior in general everything we do should reflect the feminine woman we are and bring pleasure to ourselves and to those who observe us so all of these tips that we're really going to go through really have to deal with you being out in public this is not necessarily always how you are at home because we know that you know you tend to relax at home and um, when you're married your husband really kind of knows your quirks and things like that but this means when you're really out in public how are you really displaying yourself to the world and we really kind of touched on this yesterday with modesty and and making sure that we're always pointing back to Yah and to his Torah and to his truth right so the way that you act in general, the way that you talk and move your hands and things like that can also be used to point people back to Yahuwah. And that doesn't mean, literally mean the whole time you're talking to somebody, you're just pointing like this. It just, you know, there's a way about yourself that people will say there's something different about her. What is it about this woman that really makes her stand out from the rest? And it'll cause an interest and you'll really be that light and salt of the world who really kind of draws people closer um, and, and, and really pulls people to being very interested in, in what it is that you're doing and how you're living your life. And 
that's how you'll be able to really point them to Yahuwah by the way that you live, right? So, before we begin, I do want to say this. This video in no way, shape, or form is trying to change who you are or turn you into a robot because I know that's what's going on in some of your heads right now. It's about looking more feminine overall. With the world that we live in as women, we've been forced to become pretty cold and harsh people, and it's time for us to warm up a bit. It's time for us to realize that we can be, we can choose to be soft in a hard world. We don't have to be harsh beings just because our world is crazy. We can still be feminine and soft and tender. And again, this doesn't mean that you're weak and that you can't protect yourself and that you're not strong and things like that. It's always about having that quiet, meek strength, okay? So that's 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 what I want you to be able to go in having that understanding so let's go ahead and just jump into the different mannerisms so the first thing we're gonna talk about is your hands so become more aware of how you use your hands and this is something that me personally I use my hands a lot when I talk and so this is something that I even when I was creating this presentation I was like I really need to make sure I keep more aware of how I'm using my hands am I using them in a very direct harsh blunt way or am I like very you know gentle and tender um, because talking with your hands is not an issue it's more of how you're doing it so you want to avoid stiff blunt movements you don't want to wave your hands in the air and use them firmly so there's a difference between you know doing like this with your fists and really kind of like just explaining something kind of thing you know you see how much softer that is you know what I'm saying it's just there's a difference right Okay, so never pound on a table to get a point across or grasp the sides of a podium. And I know that, um, especially if you're somebody who's nervous with public speaking, if you're at a podium, one of your first things to kind of steady yourself and, and make yourself feel more confident would be to hold the sides of a podium and just kind of lean on it and be able to talk. But to be more feminine, you don't, you want to get away from doing that and you don't want to have to feel the need to pound your fist on the table to get somebody's attention or to make a point. As a wise, quiet, but strong woman, you want to be able to really command the attention of the room just by speaking without having to really physically do anything. Um, so never slap anybody on the back that's something that you know men typically tend to do with their friends they tend to slap them on the back and be like oh good job or what's up or whatever um, we want to make sure that we're not acting masculine we want to act a lot more feminine um, learn to shake hands with men so you shake hands with a firmness but also a gentleness you know you don't have to shake like a man where you're like nice to meet you you know what I mean it's very just gentle but firm at the same time um, Examples, again, with hands. So one one example that I found that was a really, really awesome example, and I don't know if I'll be able to really sh portray it here, but pointing. When you're pointing to something, you can be very direct and like point like this, okay? But you can also kind of change the way that you point and you can point your hand, but then you can twist it and it automatically, let me see if I can move a little bit so it'll, so you can see it from the side. Okay, so if I was to point to something, I still can't like, <laughs> trying to see myself in this viewfinder uh, okay so if you're going to point to something right that looks very very harsh right so if you just easily twist your hand it's very more much more feminine it's much more soft and graceful than point you see what I'm saying that's the difference we're talking about <laughs> okay hopefully we can get my camera to focus back all right so um, use soft flowing hand motions in the activities of everyday life. So a really good example I've, I, when I kind of heard this example was think of it when you're in the water and you're swimming. Think of how graceful your hands are in the water because you have that resistance in the water, right? Think of how graceful your body moves or even think of like a, a ballet dancer, right? And how graceful a dancer will move, right? You just want to be very graceful in your movements and this is something that I found myself I was just sitting there like you know it is a totally different feeling than me sitting there and just being like very blunt you know <laughs> you know what I mean it's so, so such a total difference when you're very blunt and then when you're like soft you know what I'm saying and this doesn't mean that you even though you move soft it doesn't mean that you can't have strength because you can you know 
there, but there's just a difference between that manly movement and that more feminine movement. Um, also, keeping your palms and your hands pretty relaxed. So, you know, don't start crunching up and, you know, tensing, tensing. I don't even know what word I'm saying right now. Um, but don't make your fingers super tense and curled up. Same thing with your toes. I notice that women, when they get stressed sometimes, I notice I do this, is that I'll crunch up my toes and that's not very graceful if you think about it, you know what I mean? So don't have the witchy hands, you know? Like have very just soft hands. And whether you have long hands, stubby, stubby short fingers, my fingers tend to, I used to think they were long fingers, but sometimes I think they're really kind of stubby. And when I was gaining weight, they got really kind of chunky and you can still be graceful. You don't have to have a long, you know, body or long hands or long features to be graceful. Anyone can be graceful. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the walk. So you should avoid having a heavy gait or using long strides like a man. And when I read this, I immediately thought of when I, when I walk with my husband. And I, walk sm I, lo I, I tend to walk slower than him because I take smaller strides and he takes longer strides. And he was like, you know, babe, you, you need to learn how to walk faster. You have to learn how to take bigger strides. And he's like, that's how I learned. I learned from my brother. And then now it kind of clicks in my mind like, yeah, you learn that from your brother because that's how men tend to walk. They tend to walk with longer strides and more heavy footed a lot of times and with that kind of manly strength, right? And I don't wanna walk like that. I wanna walk with a smaller stride, a very light gait, almost like 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 you're floating on air, you know, walking, walking really lightly. Like imagining that you're like 85, 95 pounds, and this is not to promote anorexia or anything like that, but just imagining that you're like light like a feather and you're just walking, you know, you're not like, a man you're not heavy there's a lot of women who are heavy footed and I'm guilty of this I um, noticed certain times especially when I lived with my family and we were upstairs in the bedroom that I would notice when I was walking heavy because I could hear it and I'm like man why am I walking so heavy and weight does not come into play you can be a, a heavier set woman and you can still walk very lightly and gracefully so um, that's something that I even want to begin practicing myself um, also, don't copy the fashion model walk, okay? So I don't know if you've ever watched a fashion runway show, but they typically want the women to pretty much look like androgynous. They don't want them to look feminine, especially with the, the fashion styles we're going into these days where the men's and women's clothing are starting to kind of blur the lines and they're starting to look the same. You know, they tend to really have women have this very unfeminine walk about them. And, um, when you do walk more feminine, they actually train you to do otherwise. So don't walk like a fashion model, don't walk like a man, walk like a graceful woman. Um, walk in a light, graceful, natural manner with legs somewhat straight. Um, a good tip that I came across would be to record yourself walking and just see how you walk. And you know, notice things like your posture. Do you slouch a lot when you walk, or do you kind of have a better posture about yourself? Do you keep your head lifted, or do you like look down the whole time as you're walking? You know, so you want to make sure that you, you know, look up, but you're looking ahead of you. And when you look up like that, your peripheral vision, you can see everything around you and under and above. You don't have to be looking down, especially us who love to be on our phones the whole time and we're like walking and you know doing our stuff. Just Take the time to put the phone away, look ahead of you, look around you as you walk, um, and just enjoy your walk, you know what I mean? Um, examples, other examples of walking. So remember that part of your feminine behaviors can be achieved just based on your outer appearance, with, which is very true. So one thing that I've noticed is that when you dress more feminine, a lot of the other kind of feminine actions tend to naturally happen. So if you tend to dress more feminine, if you're wearing a dress, you're, you tend to walk a little bit more lightly. You tend to kind of just carry yourself a little bit more feminine because one, you don't want anybody to see anything that's under the dress, you know, and it just causes you to act differently, if you know what I mean. Um, and to always remember that this is about contrasting the men. Most men are not conscious about how they move and they only seek to get from point A to point B in the least amount of distance and effort. Men's motions tend to be straight, abrupt, bold, and heavy. So make sure your motion is the opposite. Meander a bit on your way. 
Stop briefly to enjoy your surroundings. And again, make your movements light and airy. And one thing I want to point out is that this does not mean that you can't get from point A to point B quickly. You can still move quickly. You can still get to where you need to go. It's just about how you're doing it. Does that make sense? Okay, so men tend to walk with long, bold strides and their steps sometimes shake the ground. By contrast, we can take shorter strides and have lighter gaits or lighter footsteps. We don't need to stomp across a room no matter how upset we are. We don't have to slump no matter how tired we are. And um, one thing that I noticed too that helps is that if you're sitting at your desk or you're at work or you're doing something and you notice that you begin to kind of slump, just get up, stretch, go take a walk outside. I'm telling you, it will immediately brighten the way that you feel. Um, so standing straight with your and walking with your knees forward don't waddle like a duck it's something that's cute to see little kids do but it's not cute to see a woman do it um, and again your stride should not be longer much longer than your foot so with a man their stride is is could be almost twice the size of their foot but with a woman you should try to keep your stride to really the size of your foot so taking smaller steps and that's a more feminine way of walking. So I know a lot of this stuff may be like, well, that seems kind of extra, but I'm telling you, once you start doing it, you notice a change in yourself and how you act as a woman. So definitely just try it out, if anything. So moving on from the walk, so we covered our hands, we covered walking. Now let's cover our voice and our laugh. So if you're learning to walk and use your hands correctly, you tend to modulate your voice to harmonize with that manner. If you find your voice is spoiling the impression you are trying to create, make an effort to change it. And this does not mean that you're literally becoming a new person, okay? This just means that the way that, and it doesn't mean, even mean you change your vocabulary. It's really just almost the pitch of your voice. So don't talk too loud. Don't let your uh, voice suggest having a mannish, coarse kind of boldness. Don't have like a super deep voice. Uh, no man likes a coarse, loud, or vulgar tone in a woman any more than a woman likes a man with an effeminate tone. So have you ever heard a man speak and he sounds kind of womanly? Um, this happened, I was watching a YouTube video and the whole time I thought it was a woman talking and then I watched another one of their videos and it turned out it was a man the whole time. And it's this man is a straight man, completely loves women, and I was just like, or have you ever just seen men where you question, well, are they... Are they? Mm, I don't know. Because of their, their manner. Their manner and their the way of speaking and their voice pitch tends to sound more feminine. And it almost kind of makes you feel awkward. It's the same way when you have a woman who tends to speak more manly and um, has a deeper tone or has a vulgar way of speaking. Um, no man likes mumbling or dull monotonous voices because it indicates that the character behind it is boring as well. Uh, your voice should be clear and variable. So a hint would be try recording your voice to see how it sounds. I know that's the one thing when anybody kind of films a YouTube video for the first time, they're like, oh my gosh, that's how I sound. And so you can choose to change how you sound because honestly, if you think about it, the way that you sound, your voice is going to either deflect or not deflect, but detract or attract people to you. So I know that when I was working in a call center, one of the biggest compliments that I ever got was that I had a beautiful voice on the phone. People who would call in would tell me that um, the the QA, QA, I don't even know, quality, quality something. What does QA stand for? I can't remember. Quality something, quality assurance. <laughs> so the people in quality assurance who would actually, they would, our, all of our phone calls were recorded and so they would actually grade us on our phone calls. And so I think it was like every week or so or every month, I can't remember how often, but we would really, we would get our grade and it would tell us what we need to improve on and things like that. And one of the things they always said was that I always had a very nice voice to listen to. And so that's something that I, I, I started to notice, you know, made a difference. People, um, even, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but when you talk on the phone to like say a job is calling you for an interview or something you'll notice the change in your voice when you're talking on the phone to that job interviewer versus when you're talking with you know your best friend or something you notice the differences in your voice so we naturally change our voice 
multiple times a day. We naturally change the way we speak depending on who we're, we're around. But the whole point of the feminine manner is really to be the same around everybody and to be that feminine voice all the time. Um, or, you know, at least 95% of the time, right? You know, of course we can let down, especially with our girlfriends. It's a little different, but for the most part, when you're out in public and when you're really dealing with people, you want to make sure that you really have that feminine nature about you. Um, so another thing that I had learned is that if you tend to have a more raspy voice, it could be because maybe you sleep with your mouth open at night. So something that could help would be having some sort of humidifier in your room to help give some moisture to the air. Um, because it can help your vocal cords from really kind of giving that raspiness. Um, another thing you can do is just, if in general, is just reading and speaking out loud. This is something that I found that really helps. And I know um, pretty much every Sabbath I read out loud to my husband um, from whatever book we're reading. And so I know that that really does help me. And I know that that's personally helped my husband as well. He would actually speak to himself in the mirror and he would read books out loud. And he would just read things out loud to better help him project his voice um, and his masculinity, not femininity, of course. And it helped him to, you know, land a really awesome job and things like that. So really kind of training yourself on how to speak. This is something that people who are motivational speakers do all the time. So really don't downplay changing your voice or adjusting it or training your voice to do something different. Um, this is also something singers do too. They have to constantly practice and sing and practice their pitch. So it's really not as extra as you may think it is. So again, you can um, read and speak out loud and do so with expression. Raise and lower your voice as needed for expression. Put laughter or sadness or whatever emotion. So really good books to read out loud would be, even the Bible is a really awesome book. I don't know if you've ever listened to the Bible on audio, um, but when they actually have the different characters playing out the voices, it really kind of makes the whole word come alive for you. Um, so the Bible is definitely a really awesome example of something that you can read, but really any kind of, um, not, uh, any kind of fiction book would be really awesome to read as well that has characters in it because then you can really kind of play up on the different emotions and really kind of practice how your voice can sound at different emotions and different pitches and things like that. So a uh, one thing I would say for you to do to start really kind of practicing and training your voice would be to read out loud for 30 minutes a day. You'll see a difference. Trust me, I would know. <laughs> okay, so moving on, um, continuing on with the voice and the laugh. So we're going to talk about laughter now. So you want to avoid having a masculine laugh with a deep or loud tone. Don't open your mouth and kick your head back and slap your hands on your thighs and roar and cackle and snort or anything else vulgar. Now again, I want to point out that this doesn't mean that you can't have a really good laugh every now and then. This really just is really especially for when you're out in public. You don't want to be the one that is causing everybody's attention to be drawn to you because you're laughing and cackling like a hyena. You know, that's something that obviously people are going to kind of look and feel some kind of way towards you. So. I know the first thing people think is, oh, so now I can't be myself, but it's it's just really knowing how to be out in public and how to really handle being around people and how to be able to attract people to you without having to be extra. You know what I'm saying? It's just about just being feminine. People will be naturally attracted to you because of your femininity and because of the way that you naturally act, being very graceful. Um, so make sure you're well hydrated. If you're not drinking enough water, again, your voice will be raspy. Stop smoking if you are a smoker because beyond just damaging your voice and making it raspy, it, it damages your whole body, okay? So that's just something, you know, this is not a health video, but that's just something that we all know as common sense is not good for us. And if you do live with somebody who smokes, open a window when they're smoking or place an air purifier in the home because we do know secondhand smoke also causes issues with our bodies as well. Um, and we also know that obviously this is more than just your voice at stake here. It's your, it's your health in general. So men love to hear women laugh and they especially love it when you have a cute feminine laugh. So that's just something to keep in mind. So we've covered laughing, we've covered our voice, we've covered walking and we've covered our hands. So now we're gonna talk about um, 
Langer and we're gonna talk about cooing and purring. Okay, so when a very feminine woman feels close to a man She adores she sometimes coos and purrs and this doesn't mean you're literally purring like a cat um, But it feels it's almost just kind of like content murmurings kind of thing or even sometimes baby talk uh, We'll get more into it. So when women feel the tendency to coo or purr They tend to suppress it thinking it's silly, but it's something that men actually do like uh, it really comes forth when talking to babies, so almost kind of like baby talk or when you're talking to pets. So this is something that I def definitely notice when I talk to my dog. I notice a huge difference in my voice and I notice that I tend to almost do that same kind of cooing and purring that you do when you're around a baby. Um, so these are the gentle and feminine comings and purrings that cooings and purrings that can be fascinating to men. And again, this doesn't mean that you do it all the time, it just means when you feel like you're about to do it, just do it. You know, it's a natural inclination as a woman to do. Um, and men like it. So, and then let's talk about languor really quick. So languor is really that quiet, calm air that is similar to that of a cat relaxing in front of a fireplace. It's a touch of velvet. I just really loved that description of it. So the opposite of languor is nervous and high strung behavior such as biting your fingernails, jingling keys, shaking your legs, twisting a handkerchief, constantly twirling your hair, you know, there's an opposite you know there's that calm serenity that you can have but then there's also that anxiousness kind of feeling that you can have and we need to work to overcome the more anxious habits so making sweet little sounds and displaying a fascinating languor comes from a contented trusting heart other things like girlishness and submission also come from that same place making happy little murmurings are evidence of you having contentment Consider the difference between a sigh of contentment and a sigh of exasperation. So a sigh of contentment would be almost kind of like, ah, you know, like, man, I'm really content. But a sigh of exasperation is kind of like, ah, can you see the difference? Complete difference, right? You know what I mean? It's just total, total difference. So you cannot fake contentment. It comes with having a serene spirit. And so if you're somebody who ex has ex difficulty experiencing contentment, um, this is something that I would say don't focus on too much right now. Put it a little bit to the side and focus on some of the other things that we've talked about until we cover the videos about, um, let me think, what, they, what are they? The Worthy Woman videos and the Serene Woman videos. Those will be coming um, in the future. So you can kind of put this exercise aside until then. Um, and work on some of the other things that we've talked about because languor is actually a pretty complex thing and if you're somebody who's not content it's going to be pretty complicated for you to achieve it encompasses the feminine looks and temperament it indicates an attractive relaxation so you're not kind of being stressed when you're relaxed you know what i mean it's, it's having that really serene look about you if you just watch a cat move and you watch a cat when it's laying down it is the most feminine looking thing in the world that's why a lot of women compare femininity to cats um, so you cannot have languor if you feel anxious angry or resentful so when you feel contentment and trust in your heart making those feelings known come through uh, known through your behaviors comes very easily um, so Again, with languor, if you're somebody who is dealing with contentment issues, that's something we're going to cover in another video. So don't worry about that too much right now, but you can focus on the other things. So moving on, we're going to talk about facial expressions. And this is something that me, I have a huge problem with. Oh my goodness. I literally wear like my expressions completely all the time on my face. I've had times when I'm having a conversation with somebody and I think that I'm controlling my facial expressions and they immediately say, well, What's wrong? I can tell by your facial expression. And I'm like, oh man, it gave it away. Always, my face always since I don't have a good poker face, put it that way, right? So um, that's something, this is an area that I know that I definitely need work on. So you wanna avoid frowns, you wanna avoid hardness in the eyes. So remember, um, if any of you watched America's Next Top Model because that was my show, for a long time in high school, like I was on it every season. So everybody knows the Tyra Banks smiles, right? And it's when you smile with your eyes. And that's something that I still to this day have to continue to master because it's like, you can literally look at somebody and they can be smiling 
but have like really dead eyes you know what I mean and so seeing Tyra Banks just immediately she would show you without smiling like she would have her her mouth just like blank and she would still smile with her eyes and it was like you could see the joy in her eyes and I'm just like that's something that a lot of us women need to really master um so tight lips and a drooping mouth are also things that you don't want to have feminine expressions are gentle tender sweet and have a soft look in the eyes so again not harsh not angry you know you have a nice happy you know just that overall happy face looking face is that a way to say it <laughs> okay um so facial expressions have their roots in your character if you have a gentle character it's natural and easy to have a gentle expression if you have a harsh critical impatient character you'll have difficulty keeping these wholesome traits from creeping into your face if this is a problem you've got to work on your character so you have to make sure you have sound beliefs based on moral values aka Torah, which we know Torah is the first five books of the Bible, if you don't know. Um, and it's basically Yah's instructions for how we should live our lives. Um, so you should learn to accept people, be patient with them, and forgive them. The key to this change of heart lies in humility, something I think we all need practice in. So because through this virtue, you actually learn to accept, forgive, and not to judge others. So while working on your character, try to control your facial expressions. This is something I know I'm going to have to practice. It helps to really train your character really from the outside in. So you can be working on the inside out, but also at the same time be working from the outside in. So the face acts as a teacher to your character. It reminds you to be patient and forgiving. If you continue to hold grudges and ill will towards others, this is going to even make it more difficult. So you really want to begin to work on your character. So start reading Yah's words. Start reading the Torah. Literally start in Genesis and work your way through Genesis Le Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Read those five books over and over and over again and read the other books as well because the other books really just give you one, examples of people living through Torah and two, confirming that you need to live through Torah. Um, so continue to read Yah's word and I'm telling you, your heart and your character will change. The more that you read the word out loud to yourself every day, training your voice, you're also going to be training your spirit and your spirit is going to grow and be nourished from that word and so your character is automatically going to begin to change and so while you're doing that, that's when you can begin to work on your outer uh, appearance as far as really trying to control your facial expressions. So. You can fake it till you make it, but no lasting change is possible without a change of heart, a change of attitude, and most importantly, a change of character. This is where, again, Torah comes in. Without a humble, teachable spirit that includes a correct estimation of ourselves, so humility, so not thinking of yourself as higher or lower than anybody else, your facial expression will eventually betray, your, betray you without you being humble. So our facial expressions reflect the serene joy in our hearts and our ability to empathize with those around us. Empathy and feminine facial expressions take a while to develop, so be patient with yourself. Remember, it's a journey, not a race. So now we're gonna move into conversation. We're covering a lot of, of, of stuff here, but this all has to do with how you act as a woman and just being feminine. So take care that your conversation is feminine. This doesn't mean you just talk about womanly topics, okay? We're gonna dive into it. So one, don't talk too much. Two, make sure your conversation is not centered around yourself and your life. This becomes a very boring conversation. I'm guilty of doing this and I'm slowly learning not to talk about myself all the time. Don't dominate the conversation, so don't keep turning the conversation back to things that only you're interested in. And don't focus on matters that really don't affect you or the other person. So gossip and, you know, things about celebrities and things like that, that has really nothing to do with you and is, is not going to affect your daily life. So find something more interesting to talk about. Uh, don't let your conversation become crude, vulgar, or harsh, or overbearing, or critical. Be certain your remarks reflect gentleness, kindness, and love. If discussion surrounds an unfortunate person or like something happening to a person that's unfortunate, show sympathy and concern. Don't if, if don't say, oh, well, you know, they brought it on themselves or they deserve it, you know, really show empathy and sympathy for that person. Take every opportunity to defend people, be long suffering and understanding. Avoid talking about people you dislike as you may be tempted to make an unkind remark. 
remake your attitude towards them before you even bring them into the conversation avoid subjects that lead to heated arguments avoid negative statements all of your conversation should reflect tenderness patience forgiveness understanding and love now i quickly want to touch on this because one thing that we are you know we are to help as far as steer people in the right direction when they're on their walk in Torah. And so I don't want you to take this to mean that you can never bring up something, um, you know, to correct somebody or anything like that. But there's, it's about the way that you do it. So you can be truthful, but also be kind and loving and gentle at the same time. You do not have to be harsh to try to get somebody to see something differently. And that's something that I personally need to work on a lot. I've had many conversations with people where they got heated because we believe differently and I have to learn how to really bring myself down a whole 10 notches and really just be able to approach a conversation and be able to see their point of view and not feel the need to push my side and just maybe kind of just ask them questions that get them to think differently and to say things kindly without feeling the need to attack somebody's traditions or doctrines or thoughts. That's just something I wanted to point out. Um, so we girls love to talk. A fun fact would be that women on average say about 20,000 words a day while men say about 7,000. That's a huge, huge, huge difference. Try being quiet a bit more. So just learning how to shut up sometimes. That's something that my husband constantly reminds me. He'll be like, okay, babe, you're talking too long. Okay, babe, you're talking too long. And sometimes I honestly will admit I get offended and I get like mad sometimes. And I'm like, but I'm just trying to explain myself. And I have to remember that I don't need to be talking all the time. That I can have moments of just peace and quietness. And so that's something I try to practice like while he's at work and I'm home during the day. When I'm not filming videos, I'm literally just in silence. And I'm trying to do that more and more when he comes home. Like when he comes home, I don't want to just greet him with uh, me having a whole bunch of conversations with him about stuff that I've learned or, you know, about how my day went or even asking how his day went. Just simply saying hi, acknowledging him, letting him get home and rest and do whatever he wants to do before I begin to approach him with conversation or even letting him bring the conversation to me first. Doing certain things like that can really change your relationship. A lot of times there's a lot of clashing and stress because the woman constantly wants to gab and the man's kind of like, okay, I've had enough. And this is something that I and myself am working on in my relationship daily because I am a talker and I can talk nonstop. Like there will be times when I start a conversation that I meant to be five minutes long and next thing you know, an hour later, my husband's just kind of like, okay, babe, you said this was going to be five minutes. So ladies, we definitely have some work to do. Um, so men can find a quiet woman to be mysterious and intriguing as long as they don't feel like they're be being given the silent treatment. So being quiet does not mean you're mad at them and you're not talking to them because you want to punish them. It literally just means that you're okay and you're content not having to speak about something every second of the day. Um, even a man who appreciates a talkative woman will uh, enjoy the occasional quietness. And this is also part of our whole languor thing that we talked about, so that attractive relaxation. Um, when we do speak, we need to do so with care. As our temperament, behavior, and looks become more feminine, our conversation usually becomes more loving and considerate of others. And as we improve our characters, we become less inclined to participate in gossip or backbiting and more inclined to defend somebody who's a victim. As we grow as homemakers, we have time to read and study. We become more interesting when it comes to conversation and become less self-centered and more centered on others. But remember this. Changing your patterns of conversation is a process. Sometimes you're going to take three, step forward, three steps forward and two steps back. And just remember to be patient with yourself. So conversation with the men in our lives assume a special importance. Many times it's not what we say, but how we say it that can make or break a relationship. There exists a loving and feminine way to say almost everything we would ever need to say to anybody, whether it's our men or other women in our lives, whether it's our husbands, fathers, sons, brothers, or men we have casual relationships with, or again, other women. Um, so topics of concern you know, that we're just gonna cover briefly would be your man's leadership. So anything that he's head of in the household as far as things that he's in charge of doing. So. If there's something going on and he's not addressing the situation but he knows about it and he's aware about it, don't 
talk about it there's no need to he already knows the situation he knows what he needs to do and he's gonna make that decision at some point so allow him to have that discretion um, don't go and criticize him and nag him about it and be like a mother just allow him to do it on his own time and if somebody comes to you and says something about him needing to do something just approach them with confidence that your husband will take care of it when it's in his timing um, and if it's something that he's not aware of, there's a way that you can go about it, again, without gossiping behind his back or without nagging him. So you can ask yourself before you approach the conversation, ask yourself if what you're going to say is kind. If it's not, then don't say it. Um, ask yourself how that person's going to feel after you say it. And if you know that it's going to hurt their feelings or it's going to offend them or it's going to make the situation worse, take the time to kind of step back and say, okay, I'm not going to approach this conversation until I can have this conversation cool, calmly, and collected, you know? So you really want to be able to step back and, and be able to say something in a truthful, caring, and kind way. So don't speak if you can't say something nice. You know what I'm saying? That's that whole saying, don't say anything if you have nothing nice to say at all. Point blank. So another topic would be refusing sex. And I know this may be awkward to talk about, but when you're in a relationship, when you're married to your husband and, you know, maybe he wants to do something that night and you're tired or you just do not have the energy to, don't say, well, we've been doing it all week, I need a break. Or, you know, don't come off and say something rude because it is so easy to almost emasculate and really kind of bruise that man's ego um, especially when it comes to something like sex they'll immediately maybe start to think that you're not interested you don't you're not attracted to them you maybe they don't know what they're doing and you just don't like it and you know they start to kind of question things within themselves so you know trying to say you know well would you mind doing it another day or in the morning or tomorrow afternoon or you know pick some other time you know um, and explain why. Give them the cause of why you don't currently feel like doing it. So maybe you had a really long day. So you could be like, you know, babe, I had a really long day. Can we do this another time? I really want to make sure that I have the energy to be engaged with you. You know, you don't have to say it exactly like that. And again, this is something that in every relationship as a woman we have to work on because there's a lot of times where maybe we don't feel like doing something. Um, so just learning how to say no in a nicer way when it comes to sex, okay? I know that was an awkward topic, but we had to talk about it, okay? We had to. Um, other co topics of concern would be just talking about your marriage and your lifestyle in general around other women. So women who tend to be more feminists and are against that more traditional way of living will find a way to pick apart everything you say and turn it against you. So you want to be aware of how you're speaking to women like that and that you don't give them easy you know don't make yourself an easy target so an example would be you know if maybe you see like an outfit in the store or something that you wish you could buy but because you don't work and he only works maybe you can't afford it at the time so instead of saying you know i wish i could afford something like that which would give somebody you know the chance to be able to, to say well maybe if you get off your lazy butt you and go work you'd be able to afford it you know because I've gotten comments like that before, I'll just be honest, um, from other people. And so instead you could say, maybe you could say, if you're somebody who sews, you could say, oh, well, let me take a closer look at your outfit. I make my own clothes. Let me see how I can make that myself. Or if you're somebody who maybe shops at thrift stores, which, hello, I need to start doing because I don't know if you've noticed, but these regular retail stores, they're not doing it for me. I had such a better sense of style when I shopped at the thrift store and turned the clothes into things that I wanted to wear. And I'm going to have to start doing that again. But say you're somebody who does shop at thrift stores more often. You could say, well, let me get a better look at your outfit. I want to see if I could find that at such and such shop or at one of my one of my shops. You know, you don't have to say that you can't afford something because, again, that's going to give somebody an open door to be able to criticize and critique your relationship. And again, that can take things to a heated conversation. Another thing would be, you know, if you're feeling the need to vent to your friends about something that your husband did. Um, one, I would say keep a lot of this stuff between you and your husband. Um, a lot of things can be easily worked out. Um, but also if you are going to vent, because I'm not going to say there's not going to be times when you don't feel the need to like go and tell somebody something. If you feel the need to, make sure you know who your audience is. Know if it's going to be somebody who's going to 
gossip or somebody who doesn't know how to give good advice because they're not in the situation or they've never even been married or people who are going to just negatively talk down about your husband and try to make you feel better. Avoid people like that. If you need to, talk to Yah. Yah is there and he knows your heart and you can talk to him and get it off your chest. That's really the first person I talk to about any kind of situation with my husband. I rarely ever talk to anybody about any kind of like issues that I ever have with my husband because I immediately know that one, those people will start to see my husband in a different light that maybe is not a good light. They may say something about my husband that I don't agree with just to try to make me feel better. They may try to encourage me to, you know, I don't know, get back at my husband or do something that I shouldn't do. And so a lot of times I really keep a lot of pretty much everything between my husband and I and we work everything out ourselves. But when there's something that's really bothering me, I will either go write it out in a diary or I will talk to Ya about it. That is really honestly the best way of dealing with that kind of situation. Um, and another thing would just if you feel discouraged about the way that you are living, because there's going to be times when you question like, man, maybe I should go work. Or maybe I should, you know, just depending on your situation. So I'm just giving examples. Or, you know, maybe I shouldn't be too much of a homemaker. Or maybe this submission thing is stupid and I should be more of a feminist. You know, instead of bringing those kind of ideas to somebody who you know is going to be like, yeah, girl, you need to be a feminist, equality all the way, you know, kind of just continue to speak positively about your situation and continue to see your husband in a positive light. Gratitude is the best attitude is what I like to say. So those are just kind of like some topics that I think that you would come across just when you're talking to people in general. Don't make yourself an easy target or an easy victim for somebody who's a feminist who's going to point out every single thing wrong about being in a traditional style of marriage. Okay, just don't make it easy for them. And, you know, knowing how to approach your husband when it comes to to tender topics and knowing how to approach your husband when it comes to his role as a leader and questioning things that he's doing and things like that. We're going to talk more about that in another video, but I just, you know, because we were talking about conversations, I wanted to touch on it. Okay, let's move into refinement, which is the last little section of, of manner. And I know this video is running long. I'm so sorry, ladies. So take your Sabbath day and, um, take some time and watch this. Okay, so refinement implies social breeding, and this means to be tactful, courteous, diplomatic, considerate, sensitive to the feelings of others, and the picture of propriety, good taste, and graciousness. A refined person is careful not to offend anybody. She's never rude, impolite, inconsiderate, crude, coarse, or vulgar. It has nothing to do with your level of wealth, ethnicity, religion, etc. It's literally being considerate of others. So to be more refined, never interrupt anybody or bring up a subject that would embarrass somebody or monopolize the conversation or focus it on yourself. Don't point a finger or scorn anybody. Never speak your mind to someone in a blunt or brutally frank way, even though you may technically be in the right to do so. Um, it's again how you say something not necessarily what you say if you see that you're on a subject which makes somebody feel uncomfortable have the courtesy to quickly change the subject never use vulgar language profanity or swearing and telling vulgar jokes i've told some vulgar jokes before and i've felt the room completely change because it was just a huge feeling of being uncomfortable and so i learned my lesson from that um never pick your nose or scratch yourself or pick your teeth or you know a lot of those kind of nasty things in public, that's common sense, right? Um, PDA, you know, learning how to keep it on a very low level in public. Don't fondle your husband or stroke his hair or, you know, do or giving him constant kisses and things like that. Me and my husband are very big on that. We don't do PDA outside of the house. We don't public displays of affection is just not something we participate in. And that's because there's been many times where we felt uncomfortable being around people who are way too publicly displaying of emotions and affection so just learning to keep it at a minimum when you're out in public because you can cause anybody to feel very uncomfortable um cultivate a refined taste in the way that you dress and saw your hair and apply your makeup even how you interiorly design your house picking furniture and plates and things like that have a more refined taste and you can cultivate these tastes by you know just learning and reading and exploring different things going in different stores um, listening to different styles of music seeing different styles of art um, different things like that i mean refinement is honestly just being considerate and it's really honestly common sense that's not common 
commonly practiced, we'll put it that way. Um, be courteous to everybody you meet regardless of age, situation, financial or social standing. Every single person on this earth is a human being and is entitled to respect. The higher your respect for human beings generally equals the higher um, your tendency you have of being a more refined person. Any tendency to arrogance shows a lack of consideration and um, which is expected of a refined person. Nothing is more quickly calculated to make you appear coarse and unrefined than to ignore or shun another individual. To demonstrate your consideration for people, never do anything to hurt their feelings. For example, don't show indifference to their opinions or downgrade things they say or do, especially if it's something that is important to them. Be considerate of people's feelings, opinions, accomplishments, ideas, traditions, religious customs, or their way of life. This doesn't mean that you necessarily tolerate it and it doesn't mean you agree with it, but you are considerate of what they believe. Um, example, if you meet someone who worships their tradition, so people who are obsessed with doing Christmas and Easter and things like that, I have to be considerate of how they feel. Um, even when it comes to my family celebrating birthdays and things like Father's Day and Mother's Day, rather than completely, you know, hiding away and not participating, I will go and they know that I don't celebrate these days, but I will go and I will spend the time with them. Um, because I'm being considerate and I know that it would offend them or it would hurt their feelings if I didn't take the day to spend with them when it's Mother's Day or Father's Day or a birthday. Um, another example is if you have dinner with somebody and they think that they're the top chef and maybe you don't love their food, don't uh, refuse a second plate or don't you know make it seem like the food doesn't taste good. Be considerate of their feelings. If you're in somebody's home, don't dis show a disregard for their way of life by acting self-righteous or better than them or by getting into heated arguments about their lifestyle. If someone is an easygoing person, show consideration by being lighthearted yourself, so be adaptable to the situation. The greatest mark of refinement that you can show is a genuine delight in the company you keep with a respect and consideration for their way of living. Again, this doesn't mean that you're saying it's okay for somebody to live a certain way, but there's always a way to go about it. And that's something that I highly need to practice myself, um, especially just being a woman. There's a different way of approaching things. Men approach things differently. They're very direct, very harsh, very blunt. But women being more feminine, we go about things a different way and we use our influence differently. Um, learn to respect somebody's enthusiasm. You know, don't act bored if they're enthusiastic about something. At least be engaged in the conversation. Don't feel the need to expect favors from people all the time and borrow stuff all the time. You know, that it, it's really just being a refined person. And honestly, again, it comes down to really just practicing the common sense that we know and we grow up with. So we've pretty much covered everything that has to do with a feminine manner. Um, so closing out, I just want to say that a woman's tender feminine manner can tame the most difficult man. So one um, story that I heard, which is an old Korean tale, goes like this. Um, so you have a woman who goes to a wise sage for counsel. And she goes to the wise sage and she says, Look, my husband is very dear to me. For the past three years, he's been away at war, and now he's come back, and he hardly speaks to me or anyone else. If I speak, he doesn't seem to hear, and when he talks, it's very rough. If I serve him food that he doesn't like, he pushes it away and walks away angrily. Sometimes when he should be working, I find him sitting on top of the mountain, looking at the sea. I want a potion so that he'll be more loving and gentle like he used to be. So the wise sage tells her, Go and bring me a whisker from a tiger so that I can make my potion. So she goes home, she gets a bowl of rice and meat, and she goes to the mountainside where there is a tiger known to live. And she stands really far away crying out to the tiger to come and it doesn't come. So she keeps going out each night and each night she gets closer and closer and closer. Uh, to the tiger even though the tiger still doesn't come out to her and it doesn't eat but the tiger actually gets used to her being around so one night she comes within a stone's throw from the cave the tiger comes a few steps towards her and stops and looks her in the eyes and that's the night the next night she comes a little closer and a little closer and a little closer next thing you know she is so close she could speak to the tiger in a soft soothing voice so the next night after coming that close, she, uh, where am I? <laughs> she carefully looks into the tiger's eyes 
and the, the tiger looks at her and the food that she's holding out and they just stare at each other the next night she comes she finds the tiger waiting on the trail ready to eat the food that she had and nearly six months this is a long period of time that's passed right so six months has passed since the first visit and at last one night after caressing the tiger's head she says oh generous tiger i must have one of your whiskers please don't be mad at me and she snips it off and she runs down the trail and she brings it to the sage who then throws it in the fire and the sage looks at her and says is man more vicious than a tiger is he less responsive to kindness and understanding? If your gentleness and patience can, with the com can win the confidence of a wild and bloodthirsty animal, it can do the same with your husband. Tell me that is not a super powerful little Korean tale. You don't have to be beautiful to be feminine. There are many plain Janes out there who succeed in being attractive to their men because they're models of femininity. There are also many beautiful women in this world who because of their masculine manners tend to not be very impressive to men or even beautiful. When a woman is tender and soft and fun loving and lovable uh, and t innocent and pure, she's, who stops to ask if she's beautiful according to society's standards? No one. Regardless of your figure, your form, your features, to most men, you're going to be the epitome of femininity and to them you're going to be beautiful. Very often such a woman has the most enchanting personality and succeeds in captivating the most sensible men. Such, such a woman can make a merely beautiful woman, so a woman who's just beautiful, they can make her look literally insignificant next to her. So don't let the absence of beauty or having the perfect figure or having the perfect features discourage you. Don't let beauty pull you into having a false sense of security. The presence or absence of beauty is of minor consequence in the attainment of true femininity. So with that, I want to tell you today to evaluate your manners. How is it that you act? And pick the point of your weakest, you know, your weakest point and work on that for a good week, a good two weeks or a month and see the changes that happen in your life. I'm telling you, they're gonna be, they're gonna be some big changes. So for me, I know that one of those big changes for me would be facial expressions and conversation. That's something that I'm personally working a lot more on. But I also know that my posture tends to not be very nice. Sometimes I can be pretty heavy footed. So just learning all of these things and saying, I see where I can definitely be more feminine and be more attractive to my husband, I'm gonna begin to work on those. And so I challenge you to do the same thing. And remember that it's about distinguishing the difference between femininity and masculinity. It's not about you not being a good enough woman or a good enough person. It's about bettering yourself so that you can then cultivate even better relationships around you. And so with that, um, the next video, not tomorrow obviously, um, but the next video we're going to talk about the feminine, feminine nature. I'm really excited to just really be going over these things with femininity because again I found that with my story, I wasn't a very feminine woman. Um, I actually had a lot of masculine manner, mannerisms and I, I started dressing kind of masculinely, especially when I gained weight. I really want to just kind of cover myself and hide away from society. And so, you know, I'm really learning to really be myself and to um, be modest, but still have my sense of style and to be feminine and to be girly because I used to be when I was younger. Um, so I encourage you to do the same thing. Femininity is a very powerful thing and you can you really, really, you know, with wisdom, you can really wield your influence and be able to really help people and to really be able to lead people in the right direction without being harsh. And so that's something that I personally am working on as a woman and I encourage you to as well. So with that, my sister, I will see you probably next week because I'm going to take the weekend off. I've made this decision just now. I'm going to just take the weekend off to relax. Um, I'm going to spend time with my husband and enjoy Shabbat tomorrow. I hope you do as well if you're, if you're celebrating Shabbat. Um, I'm going to be resting. I'm going to be reading out loud to my husband. I'm going to spend some time with him. We're going to watch some sermons maybe. And we're just going to relax, go outside maybe, enjoy the sun, take Dollar for a walk maybe. His ears just perked up at that, at that thought. Um, and then Sunday I'm going to 
spend time with my family who's coming back from vacation, cook them a really awesome meal, and maybe practice some of my little femininity things that I've learned. Um, so I love you, my sister, and I wish you nothing but the best. And I just pray that Yah continues to grow and nurture you from the inside out, that he continues to lead you to his truth, and that he continues to just fill you with his Holy Spirit so that you literally just change from the inside out. That we become the most feminine, spiritual, prepared women that this earth has and that we can then be that really bright light in this world who really just shows people the way to go. And um, with that, I love you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.